chess instinct has challenged me. Good luck, I guess. Don't crush me too bad. Um, or like, have some of my rating points, and I'm going to have some fun games here. Um, so, yeah, here we go. F4. Playing the fun stuff because it's Friday. Um, okay. This is probably some like ready Nimzo Larson ish thing. Maybe. It's an opening if I say it is. And. Um, I just feel like doing something different today, because it is Friday. Other days of the week we play um, standard chess openings. Today I get to play other fun things. Um, so, okay, he's threatening to fracture my pawns here. I've got plenty of pressure there. Uh, I assume that either c4 or knight c3 is a good thing here. My development's lagging, so I'm going to try knight c3. Uh, now if he plays queen c7, I have knight b5, so of course he's not going to do that, but I'm just saying, like, developing pieces is a good thing. Uh huh. Okay, I'm going to bear pressure on this. Ultimately, my position's kind of falling apart at the seams here. Um, whoa! Whoa, I did not think that that was doable. Um, that's not good. I just mean for me. If that works, I am in trouble. Uh, okay. What's the point? I don't understand what's going on anymore. I need to develop my rooks to open lines. I have no open lines because my opponent has manipulated his peaceful his pieces to useful squares. Um, I need to open some lines for my pieces. It really is that simple here. Um, Now he is threatening to play e3 and e2. Just, just a little bit scary. Um, and my rook belongs on a half open file. There's a half open file. Um, okay. Obviously, this rook on a1 is having a difficult time getting into the game. Um, so I'm trying to force this, like, either, like, bishop a3 and rook somewhere, or a5 and rook a4. This all stems back to the fact that I played an awful opening. Um, and my opponent controls the center, and this is just a difficult position for white. So this is why you should stick with openings you're familiar with and not play random moves. Um, okay, put that little lecture aside. Okay, if I play c3, he does knight d3. Uh, if I do bishop a3, again, I'm just trying to trade pieces because I'm getting crushed space-wise. Um, I have to do bishop a3 and just keep trading off and hope that I can salvage the end game. Either that, or maybe there's some crazy tactic with c3 or d3 at an opportune moment, but I really doubt it. Uh, players like to resolve tension, but it's necessary to keep tension at times in order to gain some kind of advantage. So, keep the tension here. It's uncomfortable, but that's okay. He's threatening this, which I guess is okay. Um, I have to try, oh, oh, this is ugly. 
This is losing my sea pawn. I didn't see that this discovered an attack on the queen. I only saw knight e3. I didn't see knight c3. That's my fault. I uh, also didn't see that. That's also pretty good for him. Um, so I'm holding my pawn. I've lost one pawn already. Oh, I'm losing an exchange. And I'm getting crushed on the clock, but that's okay. Oh, there's no increment. Well, that's kind of a problem. Um, so, yeah. Let's see, what's the most dignity I can lose this with? For sure, this is a difficult position. I just want to see how far I can take it. Yeah, I should have noticed that there was no increment before the game. Um, Like when I ch accepted the seek or accepted the challenge, I should have noticed it right there and then. Uh, uh oh. Uh, that's not good. Uh, um, should I go? All right, we're going to go and hope that the site doesn't go down. Uh, wait, bishop d3 loses a pawn. See, I don't know this opening either. I'm pretty bad at openings, but when I'm playing against strong players, even if I'm playing offbeat nonsense, they know, they have a pretty good sense about what to play even against nonsense. And, um, like, I, against most players, just playing random-ish moves catches the player by surprise, and they have no idea what to do. Against strong players, um, like experts and masters, this random move thing I do in the opening to try to get out of charted waters, try to get away from things that my opponent knows, doesn't help, because they know how to play. Yeah, this line is good enough. Um... Um, I just, I don't know, like, anything about what I'm supposed to be doing here. Um, other than just put a rook on the center file and now think of a plan. Somehow. This is, like... This is how bad my opening knowledge is. Um, so I get to this position, and then I'm like, well, okay. Uh, yeah, I got a position. It's playable. Um, like, I can't do a minority attack, because uh, I have a majority on the queen side. Attacking on the king side isn't the most obvious thing ever. Um, if I play knight e4, he just trades on e4. Um, and yeah, meanwhile, I don't know, like, he's trying to trade off his dark squared bishop for some reason. Um, maybe just to see what that kind of position's like, because I can't imagine why you would do that trade. Uh... That's like how completely far my evaluation is from, say, somebody who understands what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna go for this trade because I really don't know what else to do here. And maybe if I can find some way to claim the center and break this up, I mean, maybe that's a thing I can do. 
Um, Try to plant a knight up here somewhere. Although this just kind of leads to trades, so... Um, yeah, I should analyze this game afterward and figure out, like, what's going on. Um, let's overprotect the D-pawn. Um, now he's bringing more pressure on the D file. I, I think he'd like to break with C5 or E5 if he could. Um, I'm going to break, pull back and protect my rook here. And I guess advance my king because I'm not seeing a threat to play C5 or E5. Okay, now there's a threat to play e5. Now I see it. Um, so, I mean, I'm supposed to do something in this position. This denies some squares to the knight, but it weakens my c-pawn, so I don't like it. But I don't know what else I could do. Um, Obviously, I don't want to take this, but I don't see anything better. You know, I'm just going to trade down, because maybe this bishop versus knight offers some advantage to the bishop. Uh, you know, if I'm not losing a pawn right away, or something silly like that. Oh! Huh. Um, speaking of which... Okay. Well, that's good to know. Uh, well, we're going to set the trap. There's no way he's going to fall for it. But no, the point is that I'm going to put this on a dark... What? Uh, no. no. No, my whole point was to... It was very positional. It was very instructive. I was just putting my pawn on a dark square. going to put my other pawn on a dark square and try to hold this. This, no, no, this is not supposed to happen. I'll offer a draw. I'm not trying to be tricky. I'm not trying to do nonsense moves and win. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I, my goal wasn't to win like that, and I, I know I don't have to, but I just it feels awful winning that way. I don't, I don't accept it. <laughs> and I really, I want to spend my time and energy trying to figure out what I did right and what I did wrong. Uh, 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 so let's take a look at this. I mean, yeah, I can win that end game. I don't really care. Life like chess is about knowing to do the right move at the right time. How appropriate is that for this game? How appropriate is that when I'm just completely, totally adrift at sea? No freaking clue what's going on. I get the quote that says, Life, like chess, is about knowing the right move at the right time and all that. I'm like, okay. Uh, so, okay, what did I miss out on? Ah, people are asking, why did I offer the draw? And I'm like, guys, I can win that. I don't care. It's not about the rating points. It really isn't. Today is about instructive chess. Um, oh, wow. So this graph was pretty level the whole game. See, I was thinking that, like, around here, I was thinking this is at least minus a half. And by the time we hit the middle game, I thought this is, I don't know, minus 0.8 or something. This is a lot closer than I thought. I was extremely pessimistic about this game. Um, okay, it says I made the one mistake, allegedly. You know what? I don't trust this analysis. I'm going to copy this, and we're going to do this my way. Um, 
and apologies to Lee Chess for my doing this um, on a Lee Chess stream, but I need better analysis than that. I don't trust that analysis. So I'm going to load this up into my copy of Lee Chess, where I've got a better engine, or at least in my opinion, a better engine. I'm going to let that stew for a little while. Because I don't accept that I made with just one mistake this game. Now, this this is that's definitely an inaccurate evaluation of what's going on. Um, I mean, yeah, once you get to this position, a human player would recognize that black is just far, far better here. And that it's very difficult for white to try to hold this, and white must have messed up terribly to get here. Um... Yeah, you might be you might be right that playing against a strong opponent does make you a little more aware and alert and concerned. But no, I mean looking at this, this is just hideous for white. Yeah, okay, I've got a bishop, he's got a knight. But this could have been worse than it was. This could have been a lot worse. Like if he just somehow managed uh, okay, I'm being hypothetical here, but uh, this 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 is just, you don't want to play this position as white. If this is what you've got as white, it means you've done something pretty badly wrong. Um, yeah, in this position, like, because the center is kind of occupied like so, um, even before knight c3, this is pretty good for black. And then after... Um, that I think it gets even better for black after knight c3. So let me open this up here. Okay, my newer stockfish that's got like endgame tables and stuff installed. Also, okay, so here it's thinking that king e2 was better than rook d1. So it says if I just leave the rook on the board and play king e2 and try to control the center, I'm okay here. But spending the tempo to go backward and ultimately allowing knight c3 and knight takes a2 at a really difficult position. Um, that rook d1 is just terrible. Um, and yeah, okay, the official stockfish agrees too. Um, yeah, I, obviously, um, like if you were to trade off all these kingside pawns. And we're just talking about this kind of situation. Now we're talking about something that black should be winning. Or if not winning by force, winning in most practical examples. Once the rooks get traded. Um, but since these pawns are still on the king's side, things are a little bit complicated. Because bishops are better than knights in wide open positions. Although this isn't wide open because, again, there's this pawn in White's way and this pawn guards some spaces that White's king would like to use. Um, okay, so you guys are asking questions about the game. Um, you guys are asking, like, instead of... You're saying I move 25 before that I'm fine. Yeah, I th in hindsight, you're probably right. And I just felt that I completely missed something this game. And what I missed is just that the rook trade was hideous and bad. And that king e2, even if black does play knight d5, which I don't know he does. I mean, Stockfish is of the opinion that knight's going to go to d7 instead of d5. Um, I'm not sure why he wouldn't just do this right away. I guess it's saying that like rook c1 or something would be reasonable for white. Let's see what it says. Um, oh, I just take it? Are you serious? Why would I do that? Do I not understand Ed games at all? I guess... I guess Chess Instinct is spot on the money here when he says that knights are teensy bit better than bishops. He's correct. Oh my goodness. I thought I understood endgames, but that's really, that's brilliant. That bishop takes knight. Um, 
I, I mean, give me an hour on my clock, and I would still struggle to play such a move. I would be looking for every which way to try to make this bishop better than the knight. Although my pawns are all, like, on the wrong squares, and the center's kind of, like, semi-closed, so the knight is quite useful, but, oh my goodness. That's incredible. Alright, so I've learned a couple things from this game, um, but you also were asking, like, instead of the queen trade, what if I play knight e2? I don't even remember when that happened. Um, but you did ask the question, oh, here. What if I just play knight e2? I have no idea. Like, where's my knight going? I guess that does allow me to play c4. And my knight's not, like, going to b5 anyway, so knight e2's not so bad. So, yeah, we've learned a few things from this game. Um, yeah, this is how to mobilize my pawns. Like, if I play c4 and maybe b4, a4, a5, b5, and all that, that really extends the scope of the bishop. Um... Okay, black can fluster that in some ways, and probably will, to really good effect. But um, if you give white all the time in the world, that's what he would do. He is always threatening to do this, but c4 itself fits in regardless of how this pawn structure looks. Um, rook on d1 doesn't belong on d1. It belongs on somewhere that's going to be a half-open file. And white needs to anchor on these points and then slowly maneuver his way through. And you know, I'm probably not well known for my slow maneuvering ability. I'm better known for my end games than for my middle games. Um, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, Trader Lynch, that's exactly why I'm so frustrated, is that um, I thought... Uh, the, I've read like dozens and dozens of endgame books, gone through just about every endgame tutorial you can name, um, even worked my way through a good part of Dvoretsky's endgame manual, and that one's just a headache and a half, just because it's that fantastic. Um, but yeah, there's still so much I have to learn. It's incredible. Um, and here it is, here chest, in, chest instinct is here um, making clear as day uh, principles which apply in really complex positions. Um, or at least the idea that this knight is better than the bishop in that kind of really weird position that I don't see very often. Most of the end games I see, I just have a rook and it's running all over the board and capturing all the pawns and I win the pawn race. Uh, this end game that we're looking at after move 24 is a lot more balanced and requires a lot more care and precision than most end games. Um, I mean, yeah, I've bookmarked this game because this is a fantastic position for training. Um, you could hardly ask for a better training position. Um, White would love to break these pawns up. Black would probably like to play h6 if he has to. Not that he has to, but like Black's pawns are really, really solid. He, his knight's able to jump to either color of square, unlike the bishop, which can tra uh, conflicts with all these pawns. And if the pawns move forward, that just makes it easier for the knight and the rook to invade. And that's kind of why I traded the rooks. I was afraid that this rook was going to go taking all my pawns with the aid of the knight. But... Um, I'm underestimated the power of this knight d5 move. Uh, you'll note that Stockfish's main line involves playing c4, and I did see this. I was just... This looked hideous. This, I mean, you don't do this when you have a light-squared bishop, but this is the exception to the rule where you have to do it. Um, and the reason you have to do it is because this pawn on c4 complements the pawn on e3, and okay, yes, it makes it difficult for the bishop to move about, and these pawns are as rigid as possible, and white's winning chances are really slim here, but white has pretty good control of the center, and he's got a bishop, and it's able to attack things, and it's just going to be a really difficult endgame. But 
Yeah, coming up with c4 instead of rook d1, or king e2 and then c4. That's something that an expert or a master would find. Um, that's something that you'd have to give me at, at least an hour, probably more on the clock for me to come up with that sort of stuff. Ah, the John Nunn books. I've read his, I've read halfway through the one about rook endgames. It's quite good. Um, but yeah, that's a fantastic training position. Um, I'll do well to keep it in mind, and if ever I end up publishing something, hopefully I'll remember about this game. Um, not that I intend to publish anything in the short term, but you know, if ever that does become a possibility, this is a really, really good training position. Um, not just to illustrate endgame principles, but to illustrate how do you think about endgames. Um, so that's some pretty advanced thought there. Yeah. Chess instinct. Oh. Ooh, okay. Okay. Okay, we'll give it a try. <laughs> oh, this is intimidating, but no. Uh, this should be fun. We'll try it out. Um... Here we go. King e2. So this controls d3. Um, Stockfish says please c4. c4 looks better than e4, and these pawns need to complement each other. But, yeah, beyond that, oh my goodness. I didn't really read most of the Stockfish line. I took the evaluation kind of for granted. I need to keep the rooks on the board. Um... And that knight, uh, it's going to cause havoc. But if I push g3, I'm weakening my pawns. Like, these pawns uh, a knight's distance away really complement each other well. Um, but he's intending probably knight f6, and I don't know what to follow. Or maybe knight c5. Um, and so, like, okay, here are my... How do I get my rook onto an open line? Um, like if I were to play rook d1 we get that trade again and I'm just not winning that at all um, rook f1's tempting um, yeah this is confusing I think knight c5 is an idea There's so many possibilities for black here, and okay, white has long-term potential with this bishop, but figuring out what to do in the short term is kind of tricky. I guess I'm going to play rook f1. This puts it on a half, uh, on an open file, in fact. Yeah. Um. And now what? What do I do? I mean, my first instinct is to push a3, b4, c5, but this is going to hang all my pawns. And unless I get b5 in, I'm not starting to strike at this yet. So that's not happening here. Um, equally tempting is to shove the pawns on the king's side, but... That doesn't help me develop my pieces. Really, piece activity is key here. Uh, just getting the pieces to active squares is tricky. Uh, one thing I'm looking at is I do this, he moves the knight, and then maybe I go there. Um, that doesn't look right. Because, I mean, yeah. Plus he just says knight c5 and rook d8 and it's gone, so. Bishop e4 centralizes my bishop. He's definitely going to kick the bishop, no question, but um, if I go to e4, then that hits this pawn and he has to play like g6 or h6. Um, what else do I have here? Um, 
<laughs> it's not impossible. It's just a really tough position. Okay. Any pawn push is going to weaken something. Um, I'm going to play g3. And this, I, I'm completely of the mindset that pushing too many pawns is a bad thing because it makes all the pawns weak. But I think I have to play g3 and h4 in order to be able to maneuver the bishop anywhere useful. Uh, and not just have tactics dictating what I do, but... Um, be able to maneuver this bishop and have some long-term prospects with it. Uh, if he plays rook f6, I go rook d1 and so forth. And I'm trying to keep my rook on the board. It's tricky. Okay. Again, if I do this, he just knight c5. Um... No, he can't do knight c5, because then I'm threatening h7. I'm expecting g6. I don't know that that stops me, though. I mean, e4 is a good square for the bishop. In some ways, I do want to try to land my rook on f7, and bishop e4 is contrary to that. Um, but... Bishop e4 also sets forth some goals of like putting these pawns on light squares so that I have something that I'm able to attack. Um, so yeah, now we're going to try to break this down and get the rook onto some open lines somewhere. Ooh, I'm being hosted. Well, how about that? <laughs> I bet Zug would know what to do. Uh, Zug's a master. He knows all the end games, except the ones he doesn't know. Um, also, welcome. So, okay. Again, I can't get my bishop onto d5. I don't want to allow b5, but I don't know that I can prevent it either. And targeting these pawns on the king side looks fun and all, but I don't know that it's going to get me anywhere. Whereas keeping my bishop on the long diagonal uh, keeps it outside the pawn chain and somewhere useful. Like if I play bishop c2, he might even be able to play e4 and rook e6 and just seal my bishop in. Um, and it would be quite a maneuvering... Uh, to get around that. Or he might play e4 and knight d3, rather. And, wait, no, that doesn't work. Um, anyhow, I do think I want my bishop on this side of the board. It's better to keep it away from pawns that are on the same color. Or if you're going to have it on the same side of the board, put the bishop in front of the pawns, not behind it. Um... That way, at least it's able to maneuver on the other side of the board without running into all the pawns. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now later, whenever I add some time to his clock, so this isn't decided by the clock. Um, so I was thinking about this. Although, if I'm going to go somewhere, why don't I go to f3 and then g4? On f3, I'm at least supporting this advance. Um, um, hmm. Or I could go to... I'm thinking of every possible move here. My bishop's a huge target on the side of the board, is what I'm worried about. And it's not so much of a target if I move it back this way. So here I am exerting some pressure on c6. 
Uh, I do need to be concerned about um, possibilities with this knight attacking these squares and the rook coming in, or about the knight winning this pawn. Um, all that I do need to be concerned about. I need to be ready to push b4 if I'm forced to. Um, in some ways he's trying to induce b4, which weakens all my pawns. But what else do I do, right? I mean, I could play h5, and that'd be fun, but um, it's very tactical. Um, oh, if he takes a2, though, I just play rook here and then take his a pawn. So he's not ready to actually pull off that threat yet. Um, yeah, meanwhile, I can play h5 and break this up. And if he takes, I just play rook f5, and the tactics fly. And you have to believe in your peace activity. Um, yeah, no. The, the one thing that would be alarming is if he got rook d2 played. Um, then I would be really seriously concerned about my position's future. Um, but I don't think that's happening. Again, he's not threatening to take a2 right now. On e4, my bishop would dominate the knight. And um, I think that's that. So we go back. And I've probably overlooked something critically important, because, yeah, no, I totally have. I have very much overlooked something important here. Okay, um, hmm. I don't know that I would have found that anyway, but, yep. Yep, yep, yep. You are correct. Um, do I get any peace activity for giving back the material? Or giving the material? I don't know. I guess we're gonna... Oh, wait. I was thinking that, yeah, I play rook a1, knight c3, bishop b1. And completely ignoring the fact that either knight takes king or knight takes bishop would happen. Um, it's Friday, guys. It is very much Friday. Um, yeah, I need to make a take back. Because I'm not seeing any way that I can make something useful of losing the pawn. Oh. Okay. I guess bishop e... F Wait, no, yeah, you're right. Bishop e4 was also bad, because it allows that. That's what I overlooked. Um, but if I do pawn takes pawn, he could potentially play rook takes, and that's just devastating. Um, oh, it gives... okay. Um, so... now what? I don't want to play a3. a3 looks very anti-positional here. Um... I mean, a3 is just asking for trouble. But I don't know what else do I do. Rook a1? Um, hmm. Maybe I do a3 and then immediately follow with, with b4, sack on b4, and he can't play c5 on account of bishop takes b7. Maybe that's what I need to do. So my queen side is falling apart, but his doesn't stand up much longer either, and hopefully a draw results. Um, I, I think that's the plan. Okay, we're going to see like what I missed tactically here too, if anything. I did see knight c2. 
I thought knight c2 b4, and I think we all transpose back to the line I mentioned. Um, again, this is why it was important to keep the bishop um, not on the side where the pawns were, because his knight would be hitting the bishop, and over here my bishop just hits the pawns. So this is definitely an improvement playing the bishop on this side as opposed to that side. Um, so I'm not totally sure. Um, <laughs> so what have I... I don't even know what I could potentially be missing here. I apologize for moving so quickly because um, blunders will probably result. I'm just exhausted. So that's why I'm making less of an effort than I would if I were playing a tournament game or playing um, for some serious prize. Um, okay. So if king f2, knight d1, and either my e-pawn or c-pawn are loose. If king e1, it looks hideous, but who knows. What about this? What about the fun thing? I'm guessing that that can't possibly be good, but... Um, no, if I go that way, it just does rook d3, and this is pretty disgusting. Um, he's going to do rook d3 in any event. So this position's going to... It's taking a turn for the weird. Um, maybe I do have to play king f2. On account of this rook d3. Oh. My head is spinning trying to follow all this. Um, it's good fun but I don't understand any of it. Okay, well, I'm going to try this. Rather than sit there for a half hour calculating, I'm just going to play a move and see where we go. Okay. So, yeah, that's pretty smart, actually. So it gets... Oh, he's, he's saying this definitively. King f3, rook d2. Like... Oh. Oh, this is bad. Ish. Maybe. I don't know. What is chess? Um... I have to admit, I still don't understand what's going on here. So, in the name of something instructive, um, we're going to play it out. Now, uh, Chess Instinct probably has some kind of killer instinct here that he's just completely winning this. And maybe he's right. Um, but I was thinking this was okay. Certainly white no longer has any advantage, but yeah, it's a fantastic trading position, and it's more than I can understand right now. I haven't eaten dinner yet. I am... It's... <laughs> uh, this is not my peak condition, for sure. Um, and it'd be fun for me to visit this uh, when I'm better focusing on it, but... Um, I'm just kind of just playing it out and seeing what happens at this point. Which is a fun thing to do, but don't do it in tournament games. In tournament games, expend the effort, it's worth it, and um, figure out what you should actually be playing. Okay, so... He's threatening to checkmate me mid-board. That would be unfortunate if that happened. Um, wait, if I do that, king f5, I don't have any in Hermeso. So I'm forced to play this right away. 
Oh. Ha. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. Oh, guys, look what I just walked into. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for the fans, we'll play it out. We'll play it out. It's good fun. Yep, yep, yep. GG. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, even here, there's variations upon variations upon variations that can happen in this immensely complicated endgame. Um, it's a beautiful endgame to behold. Obviously, the way I played it was wrong. Yeah, let's analyze it. I keep getting more and more exhausted the longer I play. Uh, especially because I started with some bullet. And, okay, granted, you don't want to rely on computer analysis, but I'm even just using that for spot checking at this point. I don't trust Stockfish's ability to play endgames anyway, but it'll point out silly tactics. Um... Like, so here it says I'm okay-ish, and if you skip ahead a few moves, I'm just completely busto. Uh, even B5 is bad-ish. But, um, like here. Here we're fine. Here we're okay. Here I have not messed up terribly. I do spend, apparently, look, just look, G3, H4, H5, A3, B4. Out of seven moves, I make five pawn moves. That is seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's seven. I make five pawn moves. And contrast this with um, knight d5, knight a6, knight b4, knight a2. So while I'm shuffling pawns, he's making constructive forward moving peace moves. I mean, this kind of stands out. And granted, this isn't enough to throw the game for me, but it just means that I'm spending all my time pushing pawns. And my pieces are just kind of lingering, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, okay, bishop g2, sure, got to move the bishop somewhere. But then I kind of like give up on this idea, um, or really any idea. My bishop isn't going to work miracles sitting back here on g2. I have to shuffle my pieces somewhere. I just didn't see any useful way to coordinate the bishop and the rook. And I did hesitate at first playing bishop e4, but I didn't see anything better. Um, I mean, ideally I want to play bishop d5 and rook f7, but he's not going to move this pawn. That's not happening. And also, I'm not going to get time to push all these guys and then get the bishop around here and then back over there and then play rook f7. That's not happening either. So... Some kind of realistic plan is needed for white. Um, Bishop C... Okay. If you say so. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I guess, yeah, on G2, because this pawn's not moving anywhere. Uh, uh, okay. Bishop C2 is better than Bishop G2. I guess on c2 at least I'm threatening like in combination with h5 and maybe rook h there and whatever. Maybe I can somehow force black to make some concessions. Because in this position like this is not a weakness. This is not a weakness because I can't attack it. Those are all strong points. Um, um, what is a weakness is this guy sitting way back here in h7. That's the target. That's a really hard target to hit, but that's where I've got to go. Yeah. And what I was concerned about with, like, bishop here, bishop c2, or b1, or wherever on the side of the board. I guess they have to be one of the two, because going there he just takes it. But um, I was concerned, because I saw this plan of knight b4. Um, and I guess to that, I just need to be ready to play... I don't know, a3, or ready to play bishop d1, or something. Um, like, if he spends the time moving his knight out to b4, I guess, I don't want to push a3. No, that's out. That's not happening. If he goes, like, there, 
And if he follows with knight b4, I just play back. It's okay. It's nothing to worry about. Yeah, you're right, chess instinct. I just play bishop b1. And I've never had any endgame position like that, and I've never seen one like that. But bishop b1 makes sense. As long as there's no way for this rook to take a2, bishop b1 is fine. The minute that a2 starts to hang, I better have some activity elsewhere. But that rook is not going to make it to a2 anytime soon. So, yeah. Bishop b1's just fine. Um, again, the overwhelming majority of endgames I deal with don't involve this level of precision, where you're constantly calculating, like, if he goes forward with this plan, I have to make some retreating moves, but also I have to be counting on the fact that maybe someday he is going to get this rook over. I don't know, like rook d8, rook a8, and play this and trade there, and then he's threatening to invade with his pieces, and what have I done in the meantime? So I have to play actively. Um, and but at the same time I can't be afraid to play a defensive move once in a while I can't just attack all the time it doesn't work that way and um, bishop b1 kind of goes against I don't know I really like trying to keep my pieces as centralized as possible but b1 is the most active square it can go to um, so, what have I missed from ev what everybody's saying here? Um, okay. Wow, I've got a, quite the audience here. Um, so, uh, what have I missed? I'm going through everything here. My chat window scrolling back up as I, s or scrolling down as I scroll up. Um, yeah, most of the tactics that happen in most games are pretty not good. Um, so, like, this game was played at a higher standard than most games. Um, most games I get away with some cheesy tactic and it all just works out and there's nothing really much to think about. Uh, here, this is a really complex endgame still. And I'm not in my peak condition. I am playing okay-ish, but um, I need to play better if I'm going to play competitively. Uh, so, yeah, I think White still has to go forward with this plan of trying to break this up and use the rook somewhere useful. And since all these squares on the f-file are guarded by black, um, and since moving rook d1 just trades the rooks and the knights better, um, it's necessary for white to like push h5 and, well let's just play that few sample 